That's right. Welcome. Yeah, that's right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the What's going on? Bonanza show. I'm so oh, excited. no. I think I got that intro right. I think I, I don't know. I think, I think I you guys right. can hear that. Hang on. All right. That's way better. Sorry about that, everybody. Technical difficulties in the beginning. I thought I was playing the song, but apparently I was just playing another podcast that I had the song in the beginning of. Anyway, I'm very excited for today's show. I have two guests. And before we get into that, I'm going to share this. Uh, I'm going to read today's quote sharing the screen here we go today's quote carlos castaneda the art of a warrior is to balance the terror of being a man with the wonder of being a man all right boom i'm gonna bring my guests in right now my guests today are joe p returning guest he's been on the over sharon show and on my show and our other friend and joe's friend too jeff from germany and i'm very excited Today is his first time venturing into the podcast world, so everyone be easy on him. Um, but we've had several conversations before, mostly about Dune. We might not get into Dune too much here, but maybe in the future. Um, so, you know, I really like his point of view on things. So uh, I was talking to Joe and Jeff in another chat that we had on Telegram. We were thinking of ideas for a show. And lo and behold, I had an opening on the calendar because today there's no over Sharon show. Sorry about that, guys. It'll be back next week. Sharon had some stuff she had to go take care of. She's on the moon. So go look at the moon and wave to her. <laughs> She's, uh, but yeah, so I was going to have these two guys on. We're just going to have like a free flow discussion um, and probably talk about all the favorite topics that we talk about on Brandon Bonanza and the over Sharon show. So what's going on, guys? How you doing? Doing good. How are you? Uh, I can't complain. I'm doing very well. This is um going to be in a couple weeks we're going to play this. So I have just seen the Dune 2 movie uh, twice in the past few days. Um, so pretty excited about that. And yeah, just hanging out. It's a nice rainy day. So it's perfect for a podcast. I'm very excited. How are you doing, Jeff? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. It's late here. You cannot tell if it's raining. Yeah, so, these guys are in Germany, so they're like six hours ahead of me. It's great. I'm in my prime. They're just getting ready to relax and hang out. So this should be fun. Um, I'm shuffling my tarot deck that I have here. I'm going to pull a card. It's the Druid Craft Tarot. Damn Druids. I'm actually reading a book about uh, Druids. It's pretty good. About the belief. Do I have it? Oh, no, it's... I think it's downstairs. Let's see what we have for a card today. Ooh, okay. This card, let me just pin my, uh, just make myself bigger on the screen. The Two of Swords has only been following me around since I started podcasting, uh, since I started getting into the tarot, I should say, because I was podcasting before I got into the tarot. Um, two of Swords, this is a great card it always reminds you of two different ideas. Sometimes say it's some people say it's like two conflicting ideas. I like to say it's like two different points of view, even on the world or maybe two ideas that come together because the way um, she's holding them. But I like in this card that in the rider weight, she's blindfolded, but this way she's facing away. So it's like, is she peeking? I think she might be peeking, but, um, but I do like the two of swords. It's like I said, it's like two different, ideas and you don't always have to clash i feel like the world today is all about like you know uh uh like what's the word i'm looking for a division and and fighting about this and everyone's got to be right and everyone has to know whereas i feel like the better that i feel you know like years ago when i pretend that i knew everything or i thought i knew everything or i thought i knew exactly how it worked to now, I have no idea how it works. I just have a clue as to maybe how it might work. But I feel much better on the inside, a lot less nervous and anxious about things. I'm just like, oh, I guess that's, you know, I looked up the other day, I saw two planes in the sky, you know, with the trail behind them. And I'm just like, I don't know, man. I don't know what they're doing, but I hope they're having fun, you know? <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm going through these days. I feel so quiet and calm. 
and and and, and I know nothing. <laughs> it's just all those ideas; they're all dissolving. It's just uh, the the deeper I go, the more I understand that I, I I know nothing, and it's everything that I thought was was important before is just bullshit. Just everything twists and turns. I mean, I'm more capable with things, but it's like empty. It's beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. I feel like that is understated in all this like spiritual growth or whatever it is that people, you know, want to talk about. They're working on themselves or they're they're into spirituality. But I feel like a lot of those things that don't get talked about is not knowing anything. You know, you know that you know nothing. And that's really when you're secure. And I feel like it really is. It's just like, because I feel like before I was so focused on the whole world and like, I have to change the world, you know, and we got to wake everybody up and tell them what's going on. And uh, now I kind of just see it as a challenge, like a hurdle, you know, and and some people are going to overcome it and figure it out. And some people aren't. And maybe if there's reincarnation, they'll do it in the next life or however this works, or maybe they'll pass it on to their descendants and they'll be able to figure it out. But I feel like not everyone's going to jump the hurdle and make it, you know, and and who knows how many times, even just in my life, you know, because I didn't wake up to a lot of this stuff, like my mid or late thirties, really early, even my early forties. So I think that, um, you know, it's, it's just a much better place to be that you you just know that you know nothing and um you can really only work on yourself and your own behavior like your daily behavior that's really what it comes down to the spiritual war like the spiritual warfare that i go through is like am i gonna eat all the chocolate that's in there tonight because <laughs> elizabeth's sleeping and she won't know and i could just go get some more tomorrow or am i gonna just have one or two pieces <laughs> you know that's yeah. that's the true spiritual warfare my friend but I feel like any kind of sense pleasure, that's really what, what it comes down to overcoming it. But yeah, pleasure is so amazing. I, I had a time where I didn't drink when when I was like a, a, a full practicing Muslim. <laughs> and then one day I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I want to drink. And since the day I can drink boundless, boundless, man. It's just amazing. People compliment me on how much I can drink and I enjoy it. I think God is pleased with me. <laughs> yeah, I I feel that way, too. You know, I, I think I'm more of like a Taoist when it comes to any kind of sense pleasure. You know, like we even made it an oversharing tenant because we have the top 10 oversharing tenants. Everybody go check it out. Episode 99 and 100 um, where we talked about moderation, you know, everything in moderation, especially moderation. You know, sometimes you have to go a little crazy but I, I think that's what that realm's about you know it's like you can't know your limit until you go beyond it right? and like, <laughs> all right maybe i shouldn't have had all those shots of jägermeister <laughs> yeah especially not jägermeister man yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you know this everybody loves jägermeister but it, it's it's the cheapest and and worst of uh this kind of uh thing it's just and, and you know what the jägermeister is right are people aware of that in in the states uh, I, I, I don't even know. I heard it was cough syrup. That's what we were told when I was in the, in the military. Like this started off as cough syrup. I'm like, all right, <laughs> yeah, uh, um, yeah. Uh, there, there's um, um, there was a time when there was uh, a jägermeister. Jägermeister. Jäger is a hunter. Meister is the master. So he's the um, there's like the hunters association in Germany, or was, and uh, it was the 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 highest ranking hunter and there was a time where <laughs> the highest ranking jägermeister was hermann göring <laughs> i don't know if, if you are aware of that but <laughs> he was like one of the full-blown nazi big guys yeah. and i found out today that his nephew i guess or cousin uh was the boss of the psychological association no and shit. closely uh working closely with uh Carl Gustav Jung. Hmm. So yeah, Jägermeister. It's Nazi oh. schnapps. Yeah, that that makes a <laughs> lot Enjoy. of sense. You know, it's it's funny because I well, a lot of my views I think are super unique. I mean, people in this community or whatever it is we have have unique views, but 
when it comes to history, especially like World War II, either people hate the Nazis or they were like, no, they were the heroes, right? This, and I've seen compelling evidence for both sides of this. You know, I'm not going to get into all that stuff, but I just think they were people and, you know, they just did things and maybe they weren't the best. But I, again, uh, my view of history is anytime someone's demonized, I'm always like, I don't know. They were probably good. And anytime someone was just praised, I'm like, that guy was probably the biggest asshole, like uh, Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> which I could talk about because it's been so long. Um, and it has nothing to do with slavery, just the war itself. So people are like, you know, when you start talking bad about Abraham Lincoln, they're like, what are you, racist? I'm like, Abraham Lincoln wasn't even black. What are you talking about? Um, but <laughs> I could say, I'm like, you know, as a veteran of the Marine Corps, uh, the most united states troops died under his watch you know i'm like i'm not a fan of him you know but um yeah it's the same thing though i think with world war ii and i've had discussions with joe about this and he's done his own kind of investigation just talking up to people around him and yeah that's what it's you know in germany people who were there i guess and that's what it seems to me like something happened and we were told the story that's going to make us uh, you know, love our government more, no matter who, uh, at being a, some from the United States, that is, you know, yeah. we can pull the story and I, I think it's just shifting of power and rearranging of things and stuff like that. You know, like who even really knows what the heck happened? Yeah. It's kind of like everything is upside down. Right. I mean, the thing is like, uh, the Nazis are bad. You know, we're in Germany. We cannot even say things like that are different from that because it's forbidden <laughs> by law, you know? Yeah. If we say anything about the Holocaust that's not lore, then we, we go to jail. Yeah, you got to be aware of that. Yeah, hey, I would love to right now. Old lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say hey. I would love to tell everybody my dear, you're right fucking now, but <laughs> no, it's not fucking worth it. Like, it's just not fucking worth it. Everybody like, that's knocked on my door. Like, <laughs> yeah. Joe's theory is that six million died. He agrees with everything. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. That's the story. <laughs> We're sticking to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. these have uh, I was going to say real quick, and then I'll let you go, Jeff. But I was going to say these events, though, again, I don't I try not to put too much power into them because I feel like that's what they are. They're conduits for our attention and our energy. Right. Like it's crazy. But go ahead. What are you going to say, Jeff? You know, what's a crazy thing um, in uh, Nuremberg? Nuremberg. There you, you know, go. The Nuremberg trials. Um, there's the um, um, Reichsparteitags. Gelände, the Reich party uh, day area, <laughs> I don't know, and uh, they're having a racetrack there, and uh, there's some some parts of it are still there. There's uh, like a, a chamber you can visit uh, with gold and signals and everything, and people are uh, conflicted about um, doing a restoration or just tearing it down. Um, yeah, they, they had all these, you know, Big gatherings, you know. And you know, guess what's there right now? The, the Nazis are not there anymore. What? That's where they have one of the biggest rock festivals in uh, Germany. Uh, rock and uh, Park. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're using the energy of other people gathering it there. I mean, of course, it's cuckoo, right? Yeah. Gathering energy rituals, such things don't exist. But if they would exist, oh boy. <laughs> if they would exist. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think you could even argue that it does exist to the point where just human attention itself to gather that it doesn't even have to be like esoteric or occult or anything. You could just prove to like a lay person how people's attention, how important it is. And when they're focused all on one thing, you know, their behavior starts to all line up and go into the same direction and stuff like that. So and you could even use the Nazis. You could look at what happened in Nazi Germany, right? Am I right? Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't, the other thing that's really been piquing my interest to switch gears here a little bit about <laughs> the Germany thing. I don't know if you're aware of this, Jeff, and I think I've talked about a little of this, uh, with Joe, but, um, there's a guy, his name is, uh, the archivist and uh, analog is his thing. He goes by on YouTube, the archivist. Anyway, he reads all these articles from the 1800s, like the late 1800s, sometimes the early 1900s. And he does these, all these different, um, uh programs on each state and he calls them um uh, it'll come back to me but anyway so 
he just reads all these articles of the stuff they found and it's amazing they found like all kinds of greek stuff pottery and his whole conclusion or his theory is that it was like the phoenicians and they used to be these sea people that were like all over the world or whatever and they go through the language and it really is amazing the way that the language uh relates back to the phoenicians and it's all maritime stuff and even in in english with all the stuff we talk about where we don't realize you know like the bank like the bank of a river or we put our money in the bank and we have currency and flow Mm -hmm. and all these things um and another really cool thing that i didn't know that but this is this thing a guy found a lion an alive like african lion in a cave in arizona like guarding its young you know like in 1800s or whatever i guess because they had uh all kinds of stuff and in florida the natives there had their own word for tiger like they had a word for bobcat they had a word for cougar but they also had a word for tiger a striped cat a giant striped cat so it really makes you think about like what this realm is or was as opposed to what we're told and that's really i'm bringing this up because of the history thing right like it's so inverted we're told that everything originated like in Baghdad or in that area or in Sumer and Sumer and the in the uh the uh <laughs> the crescent the fertile crescent that's it I had to say yeah. the word crescent first but it looks like land. it could have been <laughs> like the Gulf of Mexico could have been like it, there's so many parallels it's it's just really crazy to me but uh, I like that stuff though because it really makes me feel uh to, I don't know like what's the um uh, my vocabulary is, is like totally failing me today, but it makes me feel like empowered. I guess that's the word because, you know, growing up, I'm always like, oh, I want to go somewhere else. Like the United States seems cool, but I love to like go to Egypt or like, you know, Jerusalem or all these places like Afghanistan, you know, and now to learn that all this stuff is here. And I've been hiking in these hills and woods my whole life. And in the past few years, I've been starting to see a lot of these rock formations as like maybe these were man-made structures that spent some time at the bottom of the ocean for a while you know what i mean and now they're hmm but uh yeah what do you think about all that i'm pretty open to all that um i I think best explains like uh nowadays um, i'm i'm listening to all the original conan stories Mm. pretty hard and and i think uh he, he got something I mean, he was part of the Lovecraftian circle and all that and, you know, all these things. So there, there's a lot going on. And how he says, like, yeah, when before Atlantis uh, kind of like drowned in the sea and all these things. And he, he has like whole stories where the, there's people um, evolving from monkey ape like people and then they... They uh, are at their high point civilization. They dominate and then they devolve again. So it's like everybody has their time. It's like people and races are like currents in time. And I think it's beautiful. You know, there's no end. There's no start. All these things are just totally uninteresting. It's just something's going on and there's a man enjoying himself slaying and fucking. And... Yeah, this became exactly. my mentality, man. And and I can tell everybody, everybody who, who feels a bit annoyed with uh, all this um, uh, feminist agenda and all that, just listen to some Conan stories and enjoy <laughs> being a man. You, you'll go outside and you want to slay. It's amazing, you know. It's like uh, playing GTA. You want to steal cars. <laughs> it's, it's like that. It's it's beautiful. It's such an amazing feeling, you know, to be a man and be like, man, Conan is like that. I can't be like that too. <laughs> it feels so good. And no matter what everybody says, fuck him. Who are they? You know, <laughs> Conan. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. No, I but love yeah. it because it really like you said the feminist thing, right? We're so like, um, we're so like, uh, beat down here as men. I mean, again, I don't want to take the whole like. I'm a victim, but if you buy into the media and buy into everything, then you are going to get really beat down because it's like, especially all the shows I've been watching, like watching new shows are really good. But like the, a lot of the white character guys are like weak men or they're gay or whatever. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. It's fun. <laughs> I, I, I had a remedy for that. I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, finishing a master degree. And, um, 
yeah, there's all like these feminist people and uh, woke agenda, everything there. And so, and at one point I, I was so annoyed um, that I, I, I can't be pretty um, argumentative, disagreeable. So I, I just decided um, to, to create a, an environment of fear. So people do not bring it up anymore around me because they are afraid they're going to crash the course. <laughs> not even the professors say anything anymore. They're like, oh, shit, man, don't get Jeff started. <laughs> and they kind of defeat me because I, I, I reason with reason yeah. and Conan. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, the facts are on your side. I... <laughs> I remember I was uh, the the DJ company that I work for. This amazing lady that works there. She's so she's so good at what she does. She does like uh, works in the office and does all this stuff. And I don't. I, I must have been like I was probably high on weed or whatever. But it was my stage where I was like kind of waking up to a lot of different things. And um, she was talking about I forgot what it was. I think we were there was three of us and we were driving out to like Cape Cod, which is in Massachusetts. But it's like a two, three hour ride. We were going to go do a wedding there. And so um, the owner of the company was with us and he wanted to get some video. You know, he's like, we got to get some social media, you know, get a get a video of us like the boys are leaving. And she's like, why does it have to be the boys? You know, I was like, because we're three guys. And, I, and then. And then I said to her, I'm like, do you know that political correctness? It was like started by a, a KGB agent and his wife. Like they came up with this whole thing in the 50s and like they wrote a book and let it go and look where it is now. And she's like, that's not true. And she's like freaking out. Was... So I, I I get it. I used to uh, do that sometimes myself where people wouldn't even bring it up. Like when the whole 2020 thing happened, people already knew they didn't even ask me. If I took the experimental <laughs> medical serum, they already knew from the whole two years prior of all my posts and stuff. Yeah, it's it's funny how that happens. Um. <laughs> and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that people already know. Yeah. You know, this, you're a beacon of hope then. <laughs> yeah, he's standing. I, yeah, I bet. Yeah. But yeah, no. I have to say. Like with the feminism and the wokeness and everything, I mean, um, it, it's so easy to 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 be polarized and be like, oh, it's all bullshit and so. But what I learned is like really, um, there are some things in there that are good, and um, most people don't see it because it has become common sense. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing when people without common sense come with the great new ideas, they're kind of pissed when we say, yeah, what's the big thing? It, it's of course. <laughs> Yeah. men and women have equal rights and they're like whoa no, 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 we have to you know like all these this is just so or you know racism is shit or whatever you know and and then you know it's, it's just so but there are beautiful things in there and things that we we have to incorporate into society i believe and so all the feminists i love you too yeah yeah 100 percent. i think that's what gets lost in these conversations are the nuances because people just think that you know if you're against feminism or you don't like feminism then you hate women and it's like no not really because i i think modern feminism actually i'm like i think they're the ones who hate women <laughs> i'm like yeah. um and a lot of the guys out there and i'm sure there's guys listening to this if you're a single guy and you feel despair because you're a white man and you know, the white man's the enemy now on TV and all this stuff. And you're not, you can't be a manly Conan man. Well, let me tell you something, just be a manly Conan man, be yourself. But like Jeff says, obviously common sense. We're not, we're not fucking, uh, we're not women haters or whatever over here. Right. But just be a man. And um, I feel you will find a woman. Cause I found a woman. And let me tell you, she was like, I didn't think men like you existed. That's what she said to me. She's like, she said she, first she dated this guy for a while. Who was like, um, uh, I guess he is kind of like a, a uh, like a, sh a chauvinist kind of guy or something like that, you know, where he's like too manly or too much masculine. And then she dated a guy uh, for a while who was like the feminine way, but it was like too much. And then when she met me, she was just she was blown away because like the first in the first five minutes that I met her, so I was at an event and I was playing music for this event, but it was like an event where um, a venue has people come to taste their food and check out the stuff and i was just kind of playing music and talking to people if they needed a dj but she came up to me and i had a tarot card so i pulled that tarot card for her 
she's like a she's a witch definitely is how i describe her in a good way um but yeah she was immediately just kind of uh attracted to me because of that and as we grew our friendship she just saw that she's like wow i can't believe that you're into like the tarot and spirituality and like you know self-healing but yet you also have a pistol permit you know what i mean like and you go like she joe came with us we all went shooting you know she's like this is amazing oh, like so I think that's what happens with all these movements. They take good parts, you know, like even the environmental movement. Yeah, it's great. We don't want pollution and all this shit. Right. Yeah. But then they start making taxes out of it and saying that cow farts are like all of a sudden now like the worst thing ever. You know, it's like, I think you guys went a little too far. But again, if you say that you're, you know, oh, I don't believe in climate change or, you know, I don't I don't think climate change is a thing. People will like freak out and say that you hate the environment. And it's like, ah. Uh, that's why I that's think. a demon yeah <laughs> that's a demon that was the main thing i always got in trouble over when i was in university it, it was i always did good but every fucking subject had one week where they devoted it somehow to climate change and every time i got to that week i made all my enemies <laughs> like, yeah. every single time because people freak the fuck out man like just just freak the fuck out it's not logical at all there's something in the spiritual realm that's going on uh, it's uh where they're just totally possessed they can't see fucking shit like uh they don't even listen they just fucking freak out and uh that that's one of the the biggest i don't know what to call it like a demonic kind of energy in this fucking world as far as i'm concerned like i, I fucking hate this subject i will not talk about this with anybody because i know what's fucking coming like um, yeah well th that's the thing because i know i know i know myself because i used to believe uh that climate change is a thing and all this stuff when it first came out you know like 20 years ago well not that when it first came out but when i first heard of it about 20 years ago like when al gore was on his whole thing yeah and, <laughs> yeah and I'm, i was always somebody who loved nature you know i loved going into the woods um and so i was like yeah i can get behind all this stuff and i think that's what's the where they get people's because yeah, there are a lot of terrible things going on and the pollution in some places is really, is really bad. But what I always tell people is like, dude, growing up, cause I live in Connecticut. I'm like long Island sound used to be gross. I used to live on the coast of long Island sound. It's a little body of water that's kept away from the Atlantic ocean by long Island. You know, it's all salt water, whatever. Um, but it used to be like, there was hypodermic needles and shit. Like it was yeah. crazy. But now it's like a paradise. Like I'll go down there and go paddle boarding or whatever. And I'll wear, you know, wear like polarized glasses so I could see through the water. And I'm like seeing fish and stuff swim around. And there's a, a little island in Milford. It's called Charles Island. Shout out Milford, Connecticut. Um, and I guess Captain Cook was supposed to bury treasure there or whatever. But I'd go out there and like um, paddle board around it. And it looked like I was... It, like snorkeling i even had a snorkel and stuff it was it looked like i was snorkeling in barbados almost i mean the you know the sand wasn't white and everything but it was like clear water and beautiful and i would tell people i'm like i don't know i'm like i think it's getting a little better you know like but they don't want to hear that they people don't want to hear that <laughs> how dare you <laughs> that's the thing when you tell people yeah everything is getting better they're like no no we were just doing the environment no this is not true it's it's obviously it's it's not true i mean of course i mean i'm from germany and it's, it's, it's so clean here and everything um and when we go to like even italy things are dirty somehow somewhere uh egypt you know garbage everywhere then southeast asia man i was in medan medan man uh, that's a uh, the the uh, capital of sumatra that's like black hawk down man that's like how the movie black hawk down is and and i had my uh um what's that you know what uh, the, the sandals uh, i wore sandals and was afraid to 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 get water from the puddles on my feet because i knew i would die from the <laughs> it's and, and it's crazy man and then we went to a uh when with my girlfriend back then and, and then we went to uh to a mall and i was pretty good there and and then <laughs> we went out of the mall like the back entrance and then there was like a big gate and it, it was barred and everything. And then on the side of the gate, you know, there, there were people coming in and out. 
and it was like the, the the entrance to Megaton, you know, like the uh, Fallout Three, the the city. It was like a post apocalyptic city. And then we went in there. It was uh, like little India, and it was like post apocalyptic. There was like kind of like Escape from from uh, you know the Kurt Russell film, Escape from New York, <laughs> or Snake yeah. Escape from New York or something. Yeah. Man, it was so fucking crazy. And people live like that. Is it's just this everywhere dirt and everything? People throw everything there. Is this a? It's education, man. It's not that the world is ending. It's not that we are destroying everything. We we just need to be educated. You know, it's like the enlightenment, the European enlightenment. People are so oh, yeah, fuck the enlightenment. Uh, it, it, it 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 did go wrong and whatever. No no fuck no man. It's just the enlightenment is still going on. You know, we're still in it. <laughs> and, and we have to see that people get education and all these things, you know, and and then they they prosper, and then they they want to take care of the environment. All it's it's, it's all so reasonable. It's logic. There 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 are papers on it. There are even books on it and all these things. You know, it's like everything is here, you know. But uh, of course, it doesn't satisfy the. Joe, you said it like the the the, the this disease, you know, this addiction this to can can you elaborate on that you know this anger or drama addiction or so i oh, think yeah, yeah, people yeah. are addicted to that shit oh yeah yeah the, you get you become addicted to certain fucking uh behaviors because it's coming out of a certain energy field like a non-linear kind of fucking energy field what we call spirit uh, it's the same yeah. thing so yeah they're coming out of a very um negative spirit and they're addicted to it because that's what's giving them their energy uh, that's how they're getting through their fucking day so um until that is released which i won't hold my breath in many cases but uh until that's fucking released to it's healed like yeah they, it's just a continuous cycle that's how they're uh they're getting their fucking energy so it reminds me of adrenaline addiction i think that's maybe how it manifests in the physical but like joe was saying on the spiritual you know because like i joe always talks about this on his show which you can give a shout out to um but, well when you when i listen to the older episodes of your other different show we talked about the way that cause and effect doesn't exactly work the way we think in the physical like there's a spiritual element an unseen element to it yeah what do you think it, joe? oh god <laughs> no Joe, I'm on top. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's um <laughs> okay. I already lost my train of thought. I haven't even begun, and I lost my train of thought. No, no worries. Well, I, <laughs> you, can, you can start by explaining how to the uh, magnet magnetic files, the lodestone kind of idea. Oh yeah, I, I use that analogy all the time uh, because it's uh, it's exactly how I see it. it it's um, think of like the like a magnetic field and iron filings, and any kind of magnetic field is going to arrange the iron filings differently because they have different polarizations and then if you were to change the magnetic field certain iron filings wouldn't even have a wouldn't even move in the field anymore they would just fall out they would be dead to that field and then the new field would arrange the iron filings to have that kind of fucking charge to it so pretty much how i see it is uh I, i'm not completely on board with the uh what is it, fatalism so to speak that's not exactly what i'm saying but you do have free will but um, everything is kind of already set in motion, what they call karma. Uh, everything is rippling out and bouncing off of one another. All these ripples are bouncing off and everything is playing out based on all the karma that's before this point, so to speak. And plus this point is going to uh, uh, create new karma, so to speak, new actions uh, on and on and on. So everything is just kind of playing out. Like you, you don't have a choice about the thoughts and emotions that arise within you. You don't really have a choice about going to the refrigerator. You just find yourself there opening the refrigerator, blah, blah, blah. All this shit is going on automatically. Where I see the free will come into hand is how you see something. Like you have your the way you look at something is what you have control over. And if you look at something in a different way, a more balanced, peaceful kind of way, you're going out of that energy. You are going to create karma out of that energy, so to speak. So, um, but you don't really have control over the actions and the dots and the emotions that are, are, are just 
set into motion from eons and eons of fucking karma, so to speak. What you do have the ability to do through spiritual work is be able to see it differently. And therefore, as you go through your life, through your day, you're going to have different thoughts, different actions, different emotions that are going to rise out of this nonlinear field based on the analogy of the iron filings and the magnetic field I was just talking about. So that's pretty much how I have come to understand this. But Yeah, I like that in the way that I would explain this to somebody, you know, because I mean, maybe they're not watching this, but if you're not spiritual and you don't really believe in the woo woo, you can even look at it from the uh, the point of view of like the collective consciousness and the way that I believe the collective consciousness works or you're right. Things are already set in motion in parts of us subconsciously or unconsciously, maybe like Joe said, going to the refrigerator, like sometimes you just find yourself in front of the refrigerator with the door open at night. Like you don't even know why you got there or why you walked over there. It just happened. <clears throat> but I think that everybody's behavior or maybe just their point of view or their way that they perceive the world makes it so so it kind of creates um what i call a spiritual realm which where which is where i say that we exist you know you have like globe people i think we're on a globe flat earthers simulation people i take it a step further and i say i think we're in some kind of spiritual realm where we're energy having this physical experience and because of that, we're, you know, we're so steeped in materialism in this culture and everything we know is from a materialistic point of view that we're taught. So we have no idea and we can't even fathom what I'm trying to talk about here, which is the spiritual realm linked to this collective consciousness, which I feel like will influence everybody's behavior. And that's what happens to a lot of people when they first wake up to this truth. They try to isolate themselves from people, you know, especially like during 2020. I did this. It was a big thing. Um, uh, there's a lot of people I didn't talk to anymore and stuff, or I didn't associate with because of everything that was going on. And I tried to just stay with my close circle, but I still found myself doing things that the, I guess, collective you would say was doing. Um, and I, I feel like that's how it happens. We are all connected on some level that we, you know, we just don't understand, but I love what you said there, Joe, cause I say this all the time too, with free will that really is the one free will that we can point to as always being true, you can decide how you feel about what happens to you. You know, like if you get a flat tire, you can get mad and pissed off about it. Um, or you could think of the opportunity that it brings, you know, because now your whole life is different because you, however long it takes to change that tire or have someone change it for you, your life's been put on hold for at least like 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. Or in my case, maybe 15 minutes if I get a, get out there with the tire. Actually, I have AAA now, uh, so I'm I'm lazy, but I can change a tire. Um, but yeah, it really is about what how you're going to feel about what happened to you. And I feel like there, in a way, there could be, it could be said that there's two different worlds uh, that exists here in this one world that we both see. And one of them is like a negative and one's like a positive. And if you start to align your behavior, I think the default that a lot of us are born into is this negative thing. We grew up with this little voice in the back of our head. And I talk about this a lot, too. It's kind of like our parents. All, they're all well-meaning. And most of them, I'm sure, they're trying to teach us these things and teachers and stuff and priests and all people like uh, family members, like uncles and aunts. But um, they actually are they're kind of domesticating us in a way. And then we have this voice in our head that acts as they used to act, but it's just in our head telling us like what we should do or what we shouldn't do. And a lot of times it's a negative voice that tells us we can't do this. You know, like when I first started doing comedy, for example, there was this voice in my head that kept trying to give me like excuses and all these things. Um, but to overcome that. And then if you have some kind of spiritual practice that gets you to see the world in more of a positive way, I feel like your whole life, I, I could just say in my case, it's changed. You know, I have such different experiences now. Even when I go DJ weddings, it's just amazing of all the little synchronicities that happen and all the good things. Like I recently, to like a week or two ago, I got a call on a Friday because my boss was like really sick. The guy who owns a DJ company. And he's like, can you cover this wedding for me Saturday? So out of nowhere, I just did this wedding I wasn't supposed to do. And it was like friends of his wife's family too. So he knew them, but he was like really sick. And I had, we had a great time. They ended up giving me this giant tip. It's just like amazing, right? You just kind of go with the flow. And I remember being 
the person watching people like me talk about this going, that's crazy. You know, that's not, but I, I don't know. I feel like if you just stay neutral to what's going on and instead of having expectations in a course we're all going to have expectations it's not like you can't have any expectations but instead of trying to have expectations in being control of how everything unfolds in front of you just kind of sitting back and watch it unfold and then you kind of react to what happens um and you know instead of trying to stop it you just go with the flow i guess like a river it's just a so much better of an experience yeah <clears throat> been thinking about that for years and a few years i came up with the solution already and it, it proved true ever since um it, it's like at the background how i came to this idea is um i think when i was 13 14 i uh started thinking about buddhism and all that really caught my attention and i always gravitated back to that and then I uh, studied philosophy at a university and yeah, until I became Zen, <laughs> it didn't make sense anymore. <laughs> so I dropped out and yeah. And after that, I was thinking for myself, you know, like, cause I, I'm not a philosopher if I read and just say what other people say, you know, so I have to think by myself and I came to the conclusion that there is only truly only one one way of freedom true freedom and this is uh we can think about our actions we can think about that we can be mindful and then we can um we develop more of a of an awareness even emotion you know an emotional awareness when i when i was younger i i had i was so closed off you know i was cold and everything you know like like with these low life people's like drug dealers and whatever it was my friends you know and, and like bad bad people and I, I i kind of became so cool and so closed off and everything and and it took me years to to to, to feel again and and with the feeling you know feeling and remember how i feel in this situation and and then I I look at the other person and then I feel how, how it hurt the other person how I am or how it is good for the other person and 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 then I, I I sit and then I I decide do I want to be that or not and then I make my decision and the next time of course I fail <laughs> and then I think about that again and then again and again and again and and someday I remember shit I'm different. I, I, I did that different now, you know, and these little things, you know, I, I say, I want to be like that. And and then I, I make my plan and then I execute it. You know, I fake it till I make it. Yeah. And that is basically, I, I think it's in accord with the basic Buddhist teachings and probably other religions as well. But it's really this, um, yeah, it's, it, it's the will. It's the will. It really is the will. We have to exercise our will, and then we can one day dominate the flesh. That's how I experience it. And yeah, great things are possible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it hurts, of course. Yeah. I, I, I don't believe all people can be free. Like right now, I'm, I, 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 I believe everybody has the capacity, the cap capability, like basically because being human. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe... Uh, people have the guts to be free because it's fucking painful, man. This is just, it's just, I, I along the way, I, I have some sort of PTSD and then I got to be honest, it, it, it's for myself. I, I traumatized myself so much with, with all, all my, my experiments and everything. Just... <laughs> no, man, this is hard, man. The way to enlightenment is hard. It's funny, as you say that, you have, like, in your thing, it looks like you have a star over your head because of the way the, <laughs> the light. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, a little gimmick. <laughs> Were you going to say something, Joe? I didn't mean to cut you off, but... Yeah, it's just time. Uh, I was 
back to what I was explaining earlier, earlier, all you, your free will is you have a choice on how you contextualize things. And that's a good way to think of the spirit, this magnetic field I'm talking about, it's context and the iron filings of the content, the, you know, the physical that's moving around, so to speak. Um, so you have the ability to change your context. The only thing is all those other energy fields that are currently dominating you and making you do these things like jeff was saying okay you, you make a decision but then you 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 fail and then you, you keep doing it but you keep trying to contextualize it to the proper context and in time that other energy field is going to let you go and then that new context is going to take over so but it's time it doesn't happen overnight it could take it depends on the person and the thing you're trying to change but it could be uh, i don't know you could change that day you could change fucking 20 years but uh it, regardless your time is going to pass you know your life is going to pass time is going to pass so you know who cares if you fall down a, a few times over the years as long as you keep going you know, like eventually things change and i've seen that as an absolute fucking fact in my life so no one can convince me otherwise at this point yeah i, I believe like for most people like maybe 95 percent or whatever of people I, I don't know how to quantify it it, it I, I firmly believe that it's it's good to to either uh, live an, a, a life uh, in the spirit of the enlightenment or maybe like secular Buddhism or like really if you, if, if if people are need a god then be a Catholic or be a Muslim or so and really follow the laws be a Jew really follow the laws you know. Shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> Don't bother other people with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, you know, live the laws. You know, like be be like like live the Jewish laws, the, the Buddhist, the, the all all laws together. Everything you know, and you know, follow some prophets and <laughs> it's all right, and leave other people alone. You know, and and I, I think that works for most people. You know, uh, so they don't do damage at least. I know I'm a Sith. I'm not a Jedi man. I'm 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 a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah. Oh man, not, we've seen maybe. it in the last couple of years. What happens? Oh, okay. <laughs> just, but let's not talk about that one, please. Yeah, it's easy to get <laughs> jaded for people. You could call them like normies, right? And sheep and cattle and all this stuff. But uh, again, that's what that's the realization that I had too. It's like. But I'm one of them, you know, like I like to separate myself, but on some level, even if the collective consciousness, I'm still, that's still me. You know, it's like if there was two birds out there and one pigeon was like pointing at the other pigeon and he was like talking mm -hmm. shit, like you're a pigeon too, dude, you know, like, and <clears throat> I feel like it only, it, it comes with uh, that whole like spiritual ego that a lot of people get when they first get into spirituality and some people just never get out of it which is which is great it's fine but they they clean up some of their own act and then they see how bad everyone else is and then they start pointing the finger uh at everyone else you know just to feel better by comparison and again i don't think that's the way either that's the route i went for a little while but i think it really is just about like you said being in touch with your emotional like the emotional intelligence and when you were saying that what i kind of just popped in my head was like you what all this has to do with like people call it the dark night of the soul mm. or all these things it really is that you're just realizing that you are the cause of all your own problems <laughs> like, yeah. you know you yourself you're like oh shit it was me that was causing all these problems like holy fuck and again to what you said too about um being sith and all this stuff or more like zen or whatever it's like, that's really what this ex experience is about. I feel like you have to, we say this on oversharing all the time, like you have to do it until you're done. Sometimes there's just things that you have to do until you get sick of doing them or until you could, like you say, you take that power of your own will and you use that to get some momentum and, um, you know, get yourself out of whatever you're doing that you don't want to be doing. But I feel like the, the whole do it till you're done thing, you see it so many times with drug addicts that are recovered and then they clean up their life and they have successful lives. And that's what it was. They just had this, they were stuck. For some reason they were stuck and life wasn't doing it for them anymore. So they were getting their reward in another way. They're just sitting fucking home. Like I had a friend who was a heroin addict 
couple friends actually that were heroin addicts, but one that cleaned up. And that's what it seems to me that that's what happened, you know, and it's great. So that's why I try not to judge people, even, you know, even the, the sheep and the, and the normies and all that stuff. I just realized that, Hey, maybe they are new, new souls in this realm and they don't know. And maybe they have to live a few lives if that's how it works or however, how, like we were saying before, I don't know anything, but if that's how it works, maybe that's what they got to do. And what am I going to do? I could just be here and smile. You know, I'm six, five, I have all this hair. I kind of look like Jesus, you know, I, it wouldn't be right if I was looking mean. I was thinking about that the other day because I never really think about it because I've always had really short hair and really no facial hair. But I went to the last open mic I went to a couple months ago and I plan on doing more, everybody, I promise. Um, but I went to one and before I went on stage, one of the hosts or the host was like going around picking on people and he didn't even know me. I knew some of the comedians there, but it had been a while. So he was like, this guy, he's like, you look like a hell's angel or like, like a nice hell's angel. And I never realized that. Like, I'm just this big guy. I mean, I'm not like built or this is just, I'm kind of skinny. This is like a, you know, but if I looked mean, I could change, you know, where, wherever I am, if I just had this look on my face, I could change the whole vibe, like in a room. And I realized that as a DJ too, it's the same thing. So I always try to smile because if I'm up there just looking serious or pissed off or whatever, it could affect the whole room, like everybody's day. Mm -hmm. And especially people who aren't aware of like energy vampirism and all that stuff, you know, just like you were say your quote unquote normies. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how just those little things. And that's really what I've learned uh, by going through this process that you were explaining, you know, you, all this PTSD that we give to ourselves that we had to overcome. You know, I had a really crazy life with uh, womenizing and that was my whole trip that I had that I overcame in this life. And, and it wasn't like I was really a mean guy or whatever, but I just told women that I wasn't into, you know, I was like, I'm not ready for relationship. Like I'm just, so I would just, you know, do my thing. And one day, like you were saying, Jeff, you think about your actions and how they're affecting other people. And you're like, Whoa. And then you think about how that makes you feel. And maybe it's an INTP thing. Cause allegedly we think we're both INTPs. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it really is. And now going forward, before I do things, I'm like, oh, I have like this checklist that pops up, right? Oh, do you really want to feel like this? It, it, You can even bring it to drinking, right? Like if you're going to go out drinking one night, you're like, well, do I want to feel like crap tomorrow? You know, like after you had a couple of drinks when you're at that point where you're about to let go and just have a blackout night or <laughs> a normal night, you know, you could say to yourself all those things. And hey, if you decide you want to have a blackout night and you go and do it, just go and do it and enjoy yourself. I think like the guilt is worse. Right. And I've, there's another thing I learned about this whole uh, life. You have to be easy on yourself. You have to just take it easy and you have to be like, all right, it's cool. It's fine that I did that. You know, I learned some stuff next time I'll try better because I feel like the alternative is just self hate. You're like, Oh, why did I do that? This is terrible. You know, my life's going to, and you, you start getting concerned with what's going to happen in the future and you get out of the present moment and you just spiral. Right. And like we talked about before, it's like that whole, the way you can go through life in a negative way or in a positive way. Um, but I'm, I'm, and when I use negative positive, it's more like polarities, more like electricity. I'm not really saying good and bad because, you know, what is bad? What is good? Sometimes well, good and bad. Good exactly. and bad is just, yeah. Well, if, way, if, if if you talk about the devil, you you're still a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> just you know, like let go of these things. I, I can. This is it's just it's just meaningless. It's it's so meaningless. It's arbitrary. It's not that there are no values. No, not at all. There are values much deeper than good and bad. Much more tangible and um, emotional and uh, like more real than good and bad. <laughs> oh man, this is it, yeah, but this is this painful path to that really for me it was painful, man. Painful, lonely, dark, you know. I had this one night when I um it was like ten years or so ago. It was one night uh family, my little family was sleeping and I 
found myself in front of the refrigerator. I'm not shitting you. <laughs> you know, really. <laughs> you know, okay. In the kitchen, and you know, like this disgusting kitchen light in in the night. You know, when when everything is so so totally bright, and then I was sitting there or, or standing there in the kitchen, and and then it struck me. You know, I had a few like revelations, you know, not like a like Mohammedan revelation or stuff like that, you know, but like small revelations. And and it struck me. It was like a like a like a, a thunderbolt like hit me. And and then I I I didn't think it, but I I spoke it. I, I was standing in the in, in, in my flat, you know, in the middle of the night, and I'm like, I am also good. I am good, you know. I'm a good boy. I'm not an evil person. And and I spoke it and it, and it sounded like thunder, you know, like really it was like really like I I, I broke a spell that night. I broke a spell. You know, me. like really this and it, it it moved me to tears, you know. I am good. And then there was like this little boy, this little child that I was. And I remembered, you know. And there's something like with um um astrology you know like my zodiac you know like the the sun moon and the the rising and all these things mm -hmm. i think it's accurate enough to work with it and there's also this thing that uh like the childhood is buried with my zodiac and all and all these things and there's something with it if we work with it creatively and, and that was something where i rediscovered my childhood myself and i'm like man i'm such a nice boy <laughs> as well yeah. you know i don't deserve to be picked on all the time or pick on myself you know i don't have to be hard on myself all the time and and, and there are there are things you know like revelations like that is moments and the world is never the same after that and it's banal of course other they're like <laughs> of course you're a good boy no it's, <laughs> it's just it's it's the banality of these things you know it's just it could be whatever you know like the, the 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 small truths and we we can only the how, how did nietzsche say um die kleinen tugenden und uh, wir können nur davon stammeln like the small um what's tugend um you know like a knight <laughs> those things that a knight has you know from the greek people uh, uh and you know our small virtues we, ha we should have our own small virtues and we should only be able to to stammer about it. And I, I think that's like these life-changing things, you know? Oh, like chivalry? Is that the word maybe you're looking for? Yeah. Yeah, like it's chiv chivalry, this, this is like this virtue. It's a different kind of morale. Yeah. You know? like no, not good and evil, but it's like there's these virtues, you know? And we can also be rich, being a rich man, a rich white old man is a virtue, you know, a Greek virtue. That's why they're going after it, man. It's <laughs> real. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. You just start a society for philosophers, and when I get old, and I'll just come move in on your society. <laughs> That's my retirement plan. So if you're going to, yeah, we, we do that. Yeah, <laughs> you just live on a beach somewhere in Greece, somewhere in the mountains, or the my, my yeah, wherever. I'm down. Um, yeah. Okay, I put you on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, unless you went through it, it's kind of hard to explain. And then something I wanted to say, too, about good and evil, It, I think it's encapsulated so well. And I don't even know if George Lucas meant to do this, but in the whole Star Wars universe, you have the Jedi and you have the Sith, right? The good and the evil, the white and the black. Well... Think about Luke Skywalker. He wasn't really a Jedi in the traditional way that if you watch the prequels and they, they're not supposed to love anybody and they're they're supposed to be like monks, basically, right? Like you would think of like a, a celibate monk or something. And Luke definitely walked both roads. And he was the one, you know, that like did it all. He blew up the Death Star. He was the true hero of the story. But he walked down both sides like he didn't listen to Yoda. He listened to his own intuition that said, go save your friends. And he went and saved his friends, you know. And I think it's funny how that's overlooked, because when the prequels came out for Star Wars, everyone saw the Jedi Order and they're all excited about them. 
And they're like, oh, yeah, great. You know, Yoda when he's younger and all this stuff, they're such badasses. But I think what happened was, I mean, they weren't really that badass because they let the whole empire get taken out right from under them. And then they allowed themselves to be slaughtered and scattered. And I think it was because they were too light. They were too much in the light, right? They they didn't get that yin yang. They were just on the, the yin or whatever for the young. So um I feel like that's a, another reason why you can't really point to good and evil, you know, in that way. I mean that maybe actions could be said to be evil if somebody does something or whatever, like kills a baby or whatever. But uh, we break it down like spiritual versus physical. Like in the spiritual, there really is no good and evil. Even if someone kills a baby, like you can look at maybe it's karma and it was that baby's destiny. And maybe that baby is going to grow up and become Hitler point two or whatever, you know, like there's all these different things you could say. Um, and that again, goes back to the free will and how you feel about things that happen around you. Right. And that's the thing, you know, like uh, there's this one theory that gets me so pissed every time, you know, <laughs> I have a few friends, they say that they say like, oh it's your soul plan you decided to have that life before you were born and i'm like bitch i'm gonna fucking smack the shit out of you if you this is i cannot handle this you know when people say that maybe there's no proof for that or so you know and i don't know man maybe i i hate myself and hate my own decisions <laughs> i don't know what it comes down to soul plan right but i think this is the the, the this is such a strong theory this, you know, the, um, yeah, fate, everything is already, the, the book is written, you know, we, the teleology of it, the, our life, everything has a purpose and it's already predestined. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it could. I don't know. I don't know. I say no. I I I live better with that with saying no. <laughs> yeah, I I think because um the whole way it's looked at with the fate thing is could be very daunting because people it kind of it gives you an excuse to just give up or not to try right or to try to be a better person. You're like, oh, it's already laid out anyway. Where the way I feel is that it's possible. That everything that already happened is known, but it still kind of has to happen and play out. So maybe a deity or a god or, or another spiritual being from a different dimension or whatever can just see things. Um, so it's kind of the way that they say that there really is no space and time. Everything's happening all at once um, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Looking at that a little bit, but I, I think that so that way, maybe you could point to fate. But I don't think it's an excuse or a reason to blame anything that happens to you on fate or to not take action because of fate, you know, because I, I feel like there is that total, that free will component to it. So even if the story is already written, you know, it, it's kind of like in a movie, they, they play with this in movies a little bit when they do time travel. And it, <clears throat> if you go back in time and you change things or uh, what's another really good example of it? I'm trying to think. If somebody's told that they're going to die in a certain way, you know, like they're foretold their death or whatever. So they try to do everything for it not to happen. But all the stuff they do leads to them dying in that yeah. way. Yeah. So I feel like it's that same thing that you can't really uh, affect it or I guess you can't change it because it's it is what is going to happen. But we have no idea. Like, it's just maybe there's somebody that already knows what we are going to do and what we already did. Um, to them it's past i don't know it's kind of hard to explain but you know what i'm saying but in that way i could believe in some kind of fate but i don't think that means that we can't do things like say if i'm gonna end this and i'm gonna go cook dinner and then i'm gonna go for a walk in the woods or whatever uh like say that is my that is what's gonna happen somebody already knows that or some being might already know that but it doesn't mean that i still have to make those choices and i still have to go down there and like cook and all that stuff um I don't know. Does that make sense? My rambling it. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I found my way out of that uh, a few weeks ago, one or two weeks ago. Um, I don't know if it's true. Again, I, no, I, like, no matter what we do, there is our fate. Of course, we we always we are on on the trajectory. And <laughs> there was like one of these moments. I was walking in the forest. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's it. 
of course we cannot change fate because we're always the same because we always uh, go about uh, our life and and how we uh, deal with problems the the same way we we never really change we have the same vibe the same energy the same patterns so uh, yeah. my way out is like yeah of course i can change my fate i have to change myself once i change myself the fate is different because uh, I, I i am different and this is still man the, the buddha is just such a smart ass dude man <laughs> <laughs> this is, you always gravitate back to that maybe it's my spleen i don't know but it, it's like really just change yourself you know uh, jesus right change yourself and it changed the world or stuff like that i don't know <laughs> that's a good with jesus but you know it, yeah i don't I, know it's a thought you know no i i like that thought i totally it it jives with what i'm saying a hundred percent because it's like patterns and you see it in human behavior there's just all these cyclical patterns that people uh will get stuck in and they're comfortable and i feel like breaking the patterns is what it's all about right you always try to like that it's funny that guy or cakes always talks about it but i'm like it's so true though so every once in a while i just try to do something totally different like one of them was um i was at a store and sometimes if you have a balance say it's like you know, it's like 1950 for your whatever. They're like, you want to round up your balance to like pay for this charity. And I always say no, because I know all these charity charities are probably scams. But I was in the <laughs> store with some friends uh, last year sometime. And I was like, yeah, I'll round up. And they looked at me like, what? And, I, and they're like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, but I just wanted to fucking do it. Like, I wanted to be a rebel, <laughs> you know what I mean? like a rebel against the rebel. And uh, it was actually a local uh, little orchard grocery store. So maybe it was a good charity. Who knows? But it was only like 50 cents, you know, but little things like that. And even big time, sometimes you got to break patterns big time. And it really does seem to uh, pay good dividends, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Joe? Just... Oh, go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. No. Um, he was standing over there being all talking over Joe all the time. Oh, no, I don't have nothing to add that I could think of. So go ahead. Um, we, we spoke about the Star Wars analogy, the Jedi and the Sith. And I think that Jedi are totally evil. <laughs> and the Sith, of course, they're brutal. And so, and they're totally evil as well. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just. It's just there, there is this um for years uh, i i i'm um uh, like i'm i'm a uh, I, I i love the works of heidegger this is how i think and nietzsche and all that so i'm always like thinking in those terms and i recently uh came to to look at it uh, certain things deeper more in depth and Nietzsche has this yeah, man this tarot card i don't know how you do that man this is this you set the pace with that. It's fate, all the topics now, because it's fate. You know, the two you. swords. This is magic, man. <laughs> yeah. And um, synchronicity, baby. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, and and he 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 says like there's these two maybe archetypes. Um, um, Dionysos, um, Dionysus, Dionysos, and Apollon. And when you look at this, I, I, I watch a YouTube channel, some guy um, who, who does like videos on uh, Kaisers, uh, Kaiser, uh, Roman emperors and stuff and Greek gods and whatever and how evil they are and uh, views them in different light. And it's amazing. And, um, you know, Apollon is not good. You know, you cannot say Apollon is good or bad. And you cannot say that uh, Dionysus is good or bad. They're just totally different mechanisms. You know, it's like Apollon uh, is the individual. It's uh, the enlightened individual, the cultivated individual. and But it's also the one who, who makes everybody praise him. You know, he builds, he, he, he kidnaps... Uh, um uh, seafaring men uh and brings him to his temple so that they worship him and stuff like that you know like he's a apollo is a total asshole 
you know um and but still you know his order you know the ordered state order, yeah. and then this is like you know that i guess that's why nietzsche says like um like uh, this is uh, the, the world religions there are um the type of apollon you know because they're everybody you know once you're in the cult you're like man you gotta you gotta worship that you know you gotta worship allah you gotta worship this one that one if you don't i'm gonna cut your head off and shit like that you know because this is the right thing you know i, I you know this is just totally that energy and it's orderly and you have these laws and all these things you know and and the the, the, the jedi are like that somehow but the Sith as well, you know. <laughs> so it's like it's it's not the right analogy, and um, and Dionysos is 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 like it's 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 uh, um, yeah, not frenzy. That's another thing I want to get to. Uh, it's it's more like this, you know, uh, like Rausch, the German word. I don't know what the English Rausch is like ecstasy, but also um, anger and you know the berserk and all these things. But that's not in Nietzsche. Uh, uh, Dionysos, but it is like this, you know, like being intoxicated, yeah. Um, but it's also the masses. It's it's like the 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 intoxicated masses that move and you know, like totally the the, the unconscious and uh, yeah, out of control and all. Um, and and it's really what is good, what is evil, you know? Like the, the, we cannot say it's just different. It's hard for me to explain right now, but it's it's just different mechanisms, you know, and and it's it's a, it, it's a scale, you know, it's and and there's like these opposites, these poles, and and we are moving on that. So it's it's just and 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 the thing is like that the Jedi are not good or evil, and that the Sith are not good and evil. They just have different approaches, different ideas of how to. Uh, to to extend their will into the world yeah a hundred percent i i think it's manifested really well in our government and also you see a parallel in the whole star wars um saga from you know the prequels on because it depends on who's in power as opposed to who's the good one or the bad one right you could see like so when Trump is in power. He was the evil man, right? Trump. And now that he's not, everyone's rallying behind him and they want him back. Um, and Joe Biden's looked at as this like evil Darth Vader uh, guy or whatever. But it's the same thing in um, like, in, in Star Wars. Sniffing because... the hair. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, um, a... Fuck, man. Yeah, How the, can the, people not see that? <laughs> the smelling noise, you know, the, the breathing noise for Darth Vader. That, that's like him, like with kids. He's like... Like it just gets faster. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're all like, "Oh, Trump is smacking a woman's ass, and he's being a dick about it." And and the other, uh, yeah, oh, we're live. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. No, you. But I, it's I, just you know, how can yeah. people see this little thing, but the big thing not? Yeah. Well, that's and that's what happens when people are in power. They're like under a microscope because you have this whole revolutionary point of view and i think people in the lower classes you know such as us or uh, us lower class peons over here um we're kind of raised with this revolutionary idea that you know we can rise up and take over and make it better because all the people on top are terrible so that's exactly what happened with star wars in the prequel because you have the emperor well before he's senator palpatine and you have the senate right and then that gets flipped over because they were, you know, the people, um, I mean, I guess you could say that was kind of like, uh, it was done in, in a, in like a underhanded way. And then, so anyway, so they have power, you get Darth Vader, you get the Emperor, they're running everything. It's like total order, you know, but dark, uh, darkness. And then you have the rebellion that comes along and then they blow up the Death Star. And then after Return of the Jedi, now they're on top. And then you had these other three movies come out. I think I only saw two of them, but it, it's starting to show how like the institutionalization happens. Same thing in Dune, you know, you have the Fremen and then they take over. And then once the Fremen and Paul Mwadib take over, spoiler alert, everybody. Um, <laughs> if you keep following in the books, you see that. Don't his, cover yours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't his listen. government. Yeah. That government come, becomes just as oppressive and deadly and dangerous as any other government. It's just the people on top are uh, different, right? So it's like this revolution, exactly the word revolution, but 
think of a turning the real word uh what revolution means and it's like regular form you know, like rpms revolu- revolutions per minute uh for a motor or whatever you get this revolution that happens um and I, I think that's like the way this works so you have this revolution between order and chaos order and chaos order and chaos and people just jump on top like the politicians just jump on top of the different waves that happen and then the other people because i saw it like it's so crazy just with the movement here in the united states because i used to be more liberal like in the early 2000s i was like anti-war and i was like against george bush and all this stuff and then when obama i was i was already aware that obama wasn't going to be much better you know by that time but a lot of people were fooled and they voted for obama because they wanted peace and they wanted less war and then you got more war but the people who were supporting obama were just making excuses and justifying it it's like wait a minute weren't you just saying that this was terrible and now you're like yeah but but we got to invade Afghan. I mean, we got to invade Iran. I mean, you know, like they're evil. <laughs> it's like, what? So, uh, and I think that whole revolution, and then when you notice it, and like you said, people unconsciously, the masses, they just go with it. But now instead of being in a crowd, everyone could just be sitting at home watching their TV <laughs> or their computer. And they're still part of a, a, a crowd to some degree, uh, uh, you know, uh, displaying what's going on and stuff. But I think that, when you first notice that it could drive you crazy. And that's what happens. I think to a lot of people that wake up to this truth, that's why they get stuck a lot in this victim and they want to blame uh, like the Rothschilds or whoever's at the top of the evil bankers and all this stuff where I think they just have it figured out. Like some of these people that people hate that are in control. I'm like, well, maybe it's a good thing they're here because we might be living in mud huts. If these assholes weren't like, you know? that's the truth, isn't it? Right. So again, it's not that I I'm happy and I I'm supporting, you know, the Rothschilds or whoever. I'm just saying that because that guy just died or uh whatever. But you know, maybe it's more about not worrying about what the hell's going on, just like you said, working on yourself, making your world around you the best possibly that it can, because that shit's always gonna happen. It's our history books are filled with it. So Yeah. I mean the thing is um I believe for an American, it should be easier to understand it. Um, like the, the <laughs> concept think. of the citizen sh- soldier and oh, uh, politics and all. I mean, in Germany, of course, we we are pacified, man. <laughs> like... You know, until Wotan comes out again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't. It's a comedy podcast, everyone. Don't worry, I, I put this as yeah. a comedy. That's how hey. I live. That's how I get away with things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Last week, last week I was at the Jewish center, and uh, yeah, I'm not bad. <laughs> yeah, I have my alibi. But I mean, my donation. Don't worry, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But um, I forgot what I wanted to say. You're talking about Hitler rising again. No? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> No, not Hitler. He's no, I, know, I, know. <laughs> uh, I mean, on in Argentina or the South Pole or the Moon. Yeah, or the Moon. Or free clones at the same. I don't know. But um, people keep complaining, and I used to complain as well. Oh, yeah, they're all assholes and this and that, and fuck them, blah blah blah. And I arrived at the conclusion, like, hmm, yeah, maybe I should go into politics then. <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah seriously because yeah you definitely who, could. who goes into politics people who who see the opportunity and who have a psychological need to to have people look at them uh you know like a a, a certain narcissism that everybody has but you know it's it's more pronounced maybe and then there's this ah oh, yeah i need to be in the spotlight and I want to make money and all this. And I, you know, and I have a, a different moral code because believe it or not, bad people have a moral code as well. And it, it's our fault. <laughs> the world is shit. Because those people who say like, man, ah, oh, no, I have my work and I have my family and everything is fine. I don't need all these things. And so, and oh yeah, I'm a righteous man. And I don't want to go to the top and I don't want to be president or whatever. 
those are the people who should go into politics and must go into politics because it, it's hard work, you know, like if, if, if we don't do anything, then, then the, if we stand back, then, then the, the, the bad guys who have their own agenda, they, they have nobody in their way. They have nobody who, who goes against them, who, who says like, no, we're not going to do that, who, who casts a vote uh, for the other party or whatever. Uh, I mean, yeah, casting a vote for a party. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult, of course, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a system, it's in place, but we have to be active somehow, you know, and this, I, I see this, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I totally dropped out of conspiracy theories. I cannot even look at them anymore, you know, and I know them all. I know them all. I know them all by heart. And But if, if, if people want to be a conspiracy theorist, and 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 have a need for God. Be a Muslim, you know. You can't believe in in reptile uh, reptilian reptile people. You can't believe in jinn, in aliens, in this and that, in angels. Everything is in there, you know. It's it's amazing. But what I want to say is like really like if if good people, if if the simple people, the down to earth people are not active, of of course the more extravagant. People will will take the reins and they will will take us wherever they want to. You know, it, yeah. it, it's so simple. It's so simple. You know, is this like um, this? Is it an American saying? I don't know. It's like the law um, is up. The law is upheld, uphold by the father. Who stands in the door of his house with the axe in his hands and his sons in his back you know everybody has to stand and people are not standing people and this is why people are slaves because they are not participating in the political and in the economic economic process you know they are not saying where they wanted to go and they are not working with their own business where where they wanted to go they just there and they work for somebody else to slave away they do somebody else's bidding they follow their laws or not and it's just you know and of course a slave can only complain and this is hard and people hate to hear that but it's a slave mentality mm -hmm. you know well, yeah, I'm, I'm rambling and babbling. It's just oh, I like what you said because um, I think that it, you're right. It does start in the family. What you said about the whole axe, the guy, you know, like I think if people had a better just a community around them, if it was a regular family, maybe if they didn't have a family, if they had like a group around them um, of people they could depend on and stuff like that, it would be a much different situation because right now everybody is just so dependent on like a grocery store on electricity on the water that's provided they're dependent on all these things and i'm not saying you should like go oh, live off grid and all these things but if you could take steps to make yourself not so dependent and just kind of start a little you know fun group not a cult everybody <laughs> just like a little fun group around you just a support system i think that would be huge because if those if people lived more like that less dependent on the system then the system wouldn't have so much control so then i like your idea of those people getting into politics and shit that's great but some people don't want to have anything to do with it so they might say to you oh that's just all waste of time or whatever but then you could say to them yeah but do you have your household in order you know is your mind in order yes is your household in order is your community in order and then your town and your city you know work it up and uh, from the bottom up instead of from the top down. And I think a lot of these problems will go away and then just turn off the TV because I've found that most people, most people are just like, they just kind of want to be left alone to do their own thing. You know, obviously you have the people that want to grab climb power and all that stuff. But if we didn't allow them in there uh, because of the, a, the dependency on it and the dependency just on the drama, right? I'm, we, I talked about adrenaline addiction before. I'm sure people who follow these politicians are highly uh, adrenaline addicted, you know, especially look at what happened with Trump with it. He just barely got the election. He's president in 2016. Then in 2020, they stole it away from him. And, you know, it's just like constant drama. Uh, so I feel like you could fall into those pits really easily. 
but like you said, it starts with a slave mentality. And all that really means is you're a slave to your own brain because that's where it starts. Are you a slave to your own mind? That voice in the back of your head? Well, then, yeah, you're going to work at some shitty job for somebody else and they're going to exploit you and you're just going to be making peanuts or whatever. You know, that is what's going to happen. But if you do become a master of your own brain, then you're not afraid. The fear goes away. Or maybe the fear doesn't go away, but you're not always acting in spite of that fear. Um, You know, you're making the decisions based on your own code. Like you said, you have a moral code or whatever. And I feel like that would be something that might be able to change the world or at least just your community. But I, in my own, for me, it's good enough to just change my own brain in my area. Like I'm, I'm content with that. And then anything else that happens is a bonus. Um, it'd be great if it could happen. You know, I'd love it if people would come together and stop being so retarded, (laughs) but, um, you know, knowing that that's not my dharma to make every the whole world figure it out it takes a big weight off my shoulders so but yeah no i I think you're exactly right people just sit around and bitch and then they don't really have a solution though you know they're just like oh yeah we'll just get this guy in office it's like well if you did it at your own level you wouldn't even have to worry about that stuff and and that's the thing is not not everybody has to run for president or so yeah you know this, this is not what i'm talking about i'm just talking about yeah bringing your man in backing your man because there's always somebody who wants to do it and i mean of and of course it's scary ah oh, i mean when you when you stand beside uh, some some halfway decent sized city mayor or so or i mean come on i can talk out of my ass you know like oh biden this trump that whatever you know but if i stand next to them i'm gonna be a whole different person of course i mean they, they are they're funneling so much energy, man. Th- those people are, they, they are demigods. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, and this is, they really just are. believe, man, if, if, if they want, you, you vanish. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, this is the, the, they're, they're people who are, who are so beyond what we think people are and what, what somebody can do. You know, this is like, <sighs> Of, of course, we're not going to go there and like, yeah, fuck off. No, this is not what I'm talking about. But this is just like, you know, participating. Participating and, and doing what's right, you know. And everybody does a little, little by little, you know. And and there, I, I see it with with friends as well and, and, uh, and, and people I know in politics, you know. And they burn out. And people burn out fast. And, and that's no problem. Then they go as far as they go. And then they're gonna fall back. They fall back into the phalanx, and then they the next one goes. You know, There's, we all watch those movies. You know, three hundred. Oh, we all want to be Spartans. We all want to fight. I mean, come on, man, who, who can fight like that? Okay. You know. But, but the other thing is, like, you know, like the the lesson that we can take from that, you know, is like there's a guy who who wants to who, who wants to go up front. Yeah, let him go up front and have his back. And then when you cannot anymore, then you pull him back and say, okay, it's, you know, rest now. We're going to take over, you know, it's, it's, it's a communal thing. And people don't do that. You know, people don't stand for each other. Um, I don't yeah. think that's important. Or if they but, do, um, you end you know, up getting some kind of like quasi internet cult that pops up, you know, like <laughs> that's another thing that happens because people will, they kind of we've talked about this on other shows, but they take it to an extreme. Um, it's like they mimic the culture that's going on because cult really just comes from culture. So you have the one main culture, and then you kind of just start your own culture with your own slang and all this stuff. Uh, but we've talked about that topic so many times, right, Joe? <laughs> but yeah, no, one hundred percent, man. I, I feel like that is the way. If you were gonna point a way to the way to try to uh make our world a better place a start with yourself like we said and that's where you want to do it you know find people like you guys we get online we have this great conversation you know that's what we're doing here we're literally doing that we're having each other's backs we're out here sharing our thoughts and ideas with other people and who knows where these thoughts and ideas can lead to in other people's lives that are watching the set, we might not even know. They might just catch this and be like, wow, those dudes are cool. Look at that. And then 
They might try to do their own spiritual practice. Like, well, if those guys can do it, then I can do it. Yeah. Plant a seed and you never know what 10 years down the road is going to look like, you know? Yeah. I think it could be daunting for some people. You know, they look at me, they're like, wow, you're a giant, your voice, you're so beautiful. Look at that hair. Like, how can I ever be like you, Brandon? And I'm like, yeah. it's listen, it's tough being me, you know, not everyone can be this beautiful and, and awesome. You know, some people got to be not so, but you can do it. That's what I say to him. Just, I'm just like Gandalf. <laughs> Somebody has to do it, man. I'm like a beautiful Gandalf. I'm like, yeah. That's do you, do you know that you to decide, Frodo, to be a little guy? You just gotta, uh, you know, decide to do your time as a little guy, Frodo. No. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want to be Frodo, man. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> Well, the, the cool thing about Frodo, too, is people never realize this, is that that motherfucker was going to take the ring. <laughs> Gollum is the real hero. Good and evil. Take that, right? People yeah. who say there's good and evil. Yeah. I mean, Gollum was the fucking good guy. Not even meaning to be, right? The path to heaven was paved with bad intentions. Yeah. <laughs> <When> he... <laughs> <It's> so crazy. <laughs> yeah. So crazy. But yeah. But you know, like with, with these politics things, you know, we had it before with the, the 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 woke people and the feminist people and all that. And we can say what we want, but we have to give them that. You know, those are people fighting for their cause. You know, yeah, and we have to respect that, man. You know, somebody who was, who was like a, a, a totally for uh, emasculating. <laughs> oh, we don't want to be men, and, and fighting for that so that they cannot. Uh, can be not men or whatever you know like and and, and they, this is a manly thing and I, and i i don't get it it's like how how is this for other men like when i do something for the people around me for my community if i stick my head out and, and i stand in for my people i feel good i feel like a man you know this gives me a feeling of, of purpose and all you know being there you know you know being a father being 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 a son being there for people you know it's like when, when I'm not, I feel like a failure. It's it's just not something that, that people feel, you know? It's just so I, I really don't get it often. I really don't get it. But yeah. I think it comes back to the materialism thing. I, I think people underestimate how much we're steeped in materialism and how much that affects us on a daily basis. Like Yeah. But uh, we should probably wrap this up soon. I think we've been going about an hour and a half. Um, so we could start to wind down a little bit. Is there anything you also wanted to talk about to keep this thing going or what? I can think of, I can always. Initially, I wanted to talk about um, Odin, Wotan, Wodanas. Wednesday? And that, that archetype. Odin, right? Yeah, Odin. Yeah. Wotan is the German expression. I wanted to talk about that, but maybe we find another time, you know. Is that uh, what you're into now, or have you been into that for a while? Is that something new yeah. that you're coming across? Or? For a few weeks now. Oh. Good. Yeah, we can talk amazing, about that. Because uh, I could even probably have, uh, I could get Zer well, we'll get Zerolath on, but I'll have to be like, Zerolath! Uh, because sometimes he likes to talk a lot. I love him though; he's great. He's a fount of information. It's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, he's he's a uh, super into all that Odin stuff. I know a little bit about it. I have read some of the Havamal, and it is really interesting. I mean, we could even just talk about because I know you sent a link to the Havamal. If you just want to talk about the first verse of the Havamal, and then we could get out of here after that. We could talk about what we think because that's it's pretty. Uh, I've heard some things about it that are cool. Some yeah way. it's decent can work with it <laughs> here you go i could probably even bring it up. since i have the internet right here i'll just bring it up and uh we could talk yeah, the havama it's it, i think it's from two words derived from two words the, the first half coming from something like the lord and mal something like song or story like the stories of the lord um yeah and, and the lord is odin in that and yeah i think it's so interesting um especially as a german 
because uh, the whole psychology, depth psychology, um, C.G. Jung talked about it. Wotan, he wrote an essay that really, yeah, and and and, and people are not sure if he if he was uh, uh, if he was really cool with the Nazi idea or if he thought it's really shit. And yeah, the depth psychology, he said like there's this German archetype, Wotan. And he, he even said that Nietzsche was kind of like possessed by Wotan, the god of the wind, the wandering people, aggression. What Dionysos is for women and men who emasculate themselves. <laughs> Think about that. Um um that's uh like the the wotan is uh, for uh, for men and that's like the the birth circus and all these i think it's really interesting um like that energy energy of change and gandalf for example is uh odin and all these so yeah oh that's interesting i would yeah fit. so shout out to to your friend he he should come online and we talk yeah i could get him on a show definitely i'll let you know um at every doorway before you enter you should look around you should take a good look around for you never know where your enemies might be seated within mm -hmm. and i mean like the first thing i think of now with my point of view is like inner work right like take a look around inside who are the enemies the enemies could just be parts of your own self Right. Like we talked about, like I was talking about earlier, that little voice in your head, that could be the enemy. And uh, this thing that I love about any kind of writings like these, like, you know, the Bible, the the Quran, the, the Tao, they have so many meanings. And this also could have for the physical, too, you know, like, hey, when you're going into a situation, look around for enemies. But then you can also look at it uh, esoterically and be like, yeah, look inside. Are there enemies inside of you right now? Because if that's the case. You're going to fail, right? Whatever you do, you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Yeah. Because I have to admit, I, I I do read into depth with many texts. And this one, I just read totally surface level. And it didn't occur to me. It was just barbarian bashing. <laughs> Amazing, man. So cool. Yeah. I like the one about love and women. where It's like, don't believe a woman. It's just so, I don't know, man. This is just so red pilled, you know? <laughs> this is hilarious. How, how'd you get kicked off of YouTube? We were talking about the Havamal. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Joe, you all right over there? Should do that. And and I think it's about the runes as well, like the, the last ones, the last verses. Um, the spells are about uh, each spell a rune. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I haven't explored them. much. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll have them watch this uh, when it comes out, and then I will. Well, I'm sure. My, hey, Zerlath, if you're listening to me right now by watching this, hit me up. We'll do us three. We'll do a show together, yeah. and we could talk about Odin and all that fun stuff. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for giving me your time today for my amazing show. It was a really interesting conversation. It was nice to meet you uh, in internet person, Jeff. Thank yeah. you so much. Great conversation. Joe's amazing as always. You always have your good little insights to add into our conversations with all your crazy knowledge that you have over there. We, we must talk about Dune and all. Maybe set a topic and stick to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we could always talk about Dune. I mean, I... I think it might be hot right now too because the Dune Two movie came out. Yeah. So good maybe point. we could talk. We could talk about some of the differences. I, I was thinking about that too, and then from there just go into, uh, you know, we can even talk about why maybe they went with some of the choices they did with the differences. But we could talk about the bigger universe because I think a lot of people, like even Joe, before we started recording, uh, Joe and I, before you jumped in, we were talking, and he was talking about how Dune so confusing. Uh, if you just jump in to read the first book, because there's so many things that you're you have to know or just assume, or I really think he probably just set it up so you'd have to read it a few times. Smart guy. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's all... INTP, by the way, <laughs> Frank Herbert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I can just tell everybody start with the very first book, not Dune, but with uh, what's that? Uh, the Machine Crusade? No, that's the second or third. Oh, the, Marian, Butler, you the second. Um, like back, like one of these, like the very first books, and then after that, like that, uh, um, the guilds and all, you know, like with the mentats and uh, uh, yeah, the Jesuit, yeah, mm-hmm. then the houses, yep, and then Dune, and then the hunters and all that, and then it's chronological because in the yeah in in Dune that the, the original book, they're like all these stories, you know, like they say like yeah. She's a Bene Gesserit. Uh, he's a mentat. Like, what the fuck, you know? And then yeah. there's, there's like, like 60, 70 hours of reading uh, for just one thing. And it's so rich. So yeah. we should schedule one Dune um, with the machines. Yeah. Thing. One Dune with the genetics thing. One Dune with the mentats, you know, like uh, the human potential thing. And I really would love like one dune with Islam. Yeah. This, this is so deep and this is so good. People are researching that, but it's um there's some things that haven't been said yet. I want to say them. All right, yeah, let's do it. I'm excited. Dune instead of done. Dune. Done. <laughs> All right. Uh my my puns don't work as well when I'm talking to german speakers usually um all right well thank you guys so much you could see more of me at more laws more problems.com it's my website i've had now for 11 years so go check out that website check out my other other show the over sharon show you could see joe on that he was just recently on actually we were talking about myers briggs personality typing and all that fun stuff and we have more episodes of that to come so look for that and then look for our dune episodes too because i mean i can't i'm already i I was listening to, I don't know if you know, Wheel of Time. I really highly recommend Wheel of Time. It's so good. But I there's 14 books. And I listened to all of them twice already now uh, in the past year. So I'm back on Dune again. I, even in between, I would always throw a Dune book in or whatever. But uh, I just finished uh, Chapter House Dune. So I'm letting that sink in. But um, yeah, so much good stuff out there. So check all that out. And Joe, what's your... Uh, information if people want to check out your show how can they find it yeah just look up joe from joker's redemption uh if you ter- type in the search bar on youtube it comes up somewhere down the middle or uh, better yet on telegram um the same thing look up joe from joker's redemption uh on telegram um i just uh started this channel i swear i won't get rid of this channel <laughs> <laughs> i learned my lesson as we were sure. talking about earlier, noting bad behaviors in yourself, I realized that that was a kind of a childish move on my part. So I wanted to do a new fucking uh, channel. Too hard on yourself. And, yeah. And um, I uh, got a video up there at the moment and more to come. I'm going to try to get a couple oh. out every week. So just go and check it out. I will put the links to that below in this video. So check that out. Um, Jeff, is there any way people could contact you if they want to for any reason? I don't know. Like maybe no. in the weekend I uh, might do something. Um, let's see. And I want to say it's like uh, right now, Joe was pretty quiet in the background um, listening, but really listen to his his podcast and uh, his videos because he's speaking all the time and it's worth it. It really is. It really is. Um, yeah, that's why in TPs are like, so we can I sometimes guess. steal the show, you know, with our <laughs> INTP. Oh, no, I- I fucking love listening to you guys today. That was awesome. I can't wait yeah. for the next show. You guys do because I love. I knew it. I knew it. You guys are going to be bouncing ideas off each other. I learned some <laughs> stuff today that I didn't know. So, oh, awesome! Sure. Right. <laughs> but yeah, to back up what Jeff said, go check out Joe's stuff. It's really good. Um, definitely, hundred percent. I check it out. And I'll, like I said, I'll put links to it underneath. And um, make sure you guys leave comments, thumbs up on the video. If you have any questions or challenges or whatever you wanted to anything we had to say, just let us know. And, um, you know, maybe we'll do a show about it or something and, you know, keep it civil though. I don't even respond to negative, like when people are just super obnoxious or whatever, I just delete it. I don't even bother. I used to do all that, but it's like, all right, whatever. 
no time for Start your own YouTube channel. Come on, you can do it. It's so easy. You do it with a phone these days. All right. Well, uh, that was the Brandon Bonanza show. And I'm just going to play my cool little theme song. I love this song. Uh, oops. Hang on before I do that. And let's get it ready. Um, maybe I'm not going to play it. What's going on here? There we are. All right. It's ready. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Until the next time, take care. And, uh, you know, remember that you don't know anything. Amen. Yeah. <laughs>